transformation coach and a spiritual teacher. You're about to listen to a recording of one of my regression sessions. If you enjoy the content on my channel, please consider subscribing. And if you click on the bell, it will inform you of any of my future postings. Also, leave a comment and click like, because that helps to bring this kind of content to more viewers. I hope you enjoy the recording, and I hope to see you again in my future videos. I'd like you to tell me the first impressions that you get as you reach the surface. The numbers 1920. Are you seeing them or sensing them? Sensing. And just become aware of what that signifies. Okay, I'm starting to see people. It's a busy street with a lot of people. Where are they on the street? They're in the middle of it. It's like a mm -hmm. festival or something. What else do you notice other than the people? Very fancy dresses. Describe them to me. They have a bell type of bottom where they come out, yellow and white hats. The women are wearing hats. They have flowers and netting over them. Or their face? Yes. Do you see men? No. So it's just women? Yes. Okay. And where are you located in relation to them? I'm just kind of standing in the middle of everything. And I'd like you to look at your feet. Tell me what you're wearing on them. I think I have on a dress too. My feet are covered. And tell me what you're wearing on your body. I have on a dress. It's yellow and white. Which part is white? It's a heavy dress. What makes it heavy? The fabric. It's mm -hmm. very heavy. Is it short sleeves or long sleeves? Short sleeves. So is it warm outside? Yes, it's hot. The roads are brick. Is it easy for you to walk on them? No. I think I may have one heels of some sort. If you lift your skirt up just a bit, you'll be able to see your shoes. They are white. I have on white gloves as well. And so become aware of how you feel being in the middle of that crowd. I'm happy. Are you all heading somewhere? We're dancing in the street. <laughs> what is the occasion for it? Mardi Gras? Why are there no men? They are coming. Where are they now? I'm getting a W word, but it's not very clear. So allow a little bit of time to pass and notice what changes around you. I think that there's chaos now. What happened? Something happened and everyone is panicking. What is everyone doing? Scattering, finding a place to hide. What do you do? I run towards a building. Become aware of what happened to cause this panic. 
There was a bomb. There was an explosion. Was it close to you? It was not close in proximity, but it was on the same street. Who detonated the bomb? It's not coming to me right now. Okay. And so when you hide, do you go into a building? Yes. Are there other people with you? Yes. What do you do when you're in the building? We gather and get away from the windows. Do you know what's happening outside? No. How long do you stay there? Hours. Is there something that still tells you that there's danger? I'm really confused. I think I'm a child. What are you experiencing? <laughs> I can't find my mom. So as you take a deep breath, you will experience a deep sense of peace and relaxation. So on the count of three, I'd like you to move forward to the time when the next important thing happens in that day. One, two, and three. Tell me what happens. We are all outside now, back on the same street. And what's happening? We are looking for everyone that we could not find. What's the mood outside? It's not as chaotic. Is it still daytime? It's dusk. It's not quite dark yet. And so what do you do? I found someone who's helping me to find my mom and she gives me comfort. Do you find her? No. And what do you do then? I go with this woman. Where does she take you? To her home. About what age are you now? Ten. Are you still wearing that white and yellow dress? She's given me clothes to change. What does that clothes look like? A dress like a nightgown. It's white with flowers on it. Is this someone that you knew before? Yes. And she knows your mom? Yes. On the count of three, I'd like you to see yourself standing in front of your own home. One, two, and three. And tell me what you see. Brown tall. The roof comes to a point of like a triangle. It's very big. Is it a house? Yes. How many stories? Three. And what do you see next to the house? Greenery. So go ahead and answer it and describe to me what's inside. There's a long hallway. There's stairs on the right side of me. I see a sitting room with furniture. It's very fancy, it's white furniture. If I walk back from the sitting room, I see a dining room with a very long table. Red colors in the dining room. The kitchen is blue. What do you see in the kitchen? I see a window, a sink, I see the counters. Out of the window I see a yard with toys. Go ahead and go upstairs. Tell me what you notice there. The steps are very creaky. There's a long staircase up and it 
turns to the left. I see some rooms. All of the doors are closed. I see five doors. I know that one on the right side of me is the bathroom and my bedroom is in the middle. Are any other rooms occupied? Two other rooms are occupied. Who lives in them? My mom, my dad, my sister. So you're going to now see yourself having a meal as you would normally have a meal in the, in the house. And tell me what you see. There are a lot of guests over. The table is full. There's a lot of food. I see my dad. I see my mom. And I think this is our family. There's a baby. Whose baby is my mom's sister. Tell me how your mom is dressed now. She has on a dress. It has a high neck. Her hair is curled and pinned back. She has a smile. How long is her dress? Right above her ankles. And how's your dad dressed? He has on a button-up shirt. It's white and brown pants. And where are you sitting? I'm sitting on the right side of the table next to my dad. What's the atmosphere at the table? A lot of talking, a lot of chatter. How often do you have big family gatherings like this? Every day. Are all these people living inside the house? They live close by. So who lives in this house with you? My mom and my dad. How about your sister? I don't see her here. Like I'm aware of where she is. She passed away. What happened to her? She was in an accident. What kind of accident? Car. How long ago? Five years. How old was she then? Seven. Was she inside the car or outside? Outside. How did your parents handle it? My father is angry. My mother surrounds herself with family. And how are you dealing with it? I'm sad. Do you have friends? No. Are you friends with any of the children within the family? Yes, but they are younger. So on the count of three, we're going to move back after the bomb went off. One, two, and three. And tell me what's going through your mind that evening. I'm confused. I was with my mom, and then she just disappeared. Come on, where, why this woman that knows your family did not take you to your house? She wanted to take me. Why didn't she? She wanted to take me for herself. Does she intend to keep you? Yes. Why is that? She doesn't like my mom. Why? Because of my dad. 
What is her connection with your dad? She wanted to be with him. What was your dad's response to that? He did not want that. Was that before he married your mom? Yes. So where is your dad now? He's dead. What happened? He was killed by the bomb. How did he end up being near the bomb? Working. What was he doing? Industrial building. He was a worker there. Do you think that your mother was aware that the bomb went off? near him? Yes. So I'd like you to move forward in time to the next morning. And tell me what happens the next morning. I'm still in her home. Is there any plan to look for your mom? Yes. We are going to look for her. Where do you go? to my home first. To so see yourself arriving there, what do you find? There's no one home. How about your relatives? Are they aware of what happened? Yes. Do you find any of them? It's very quiet. Where do you go next? To the hospital. Describe to me what you see there. There are a lot of injuries, a lot of people hurt and looking for people. How did you travel to the hospital? In a car. What kind of car? Four doors, blue and white. I see some chrome. And who was driving it? The woman. What is next? I find my aunt. What is she doing? She's sobbing and holding her baby. What did you learn from her? Her husband is gone. Was he there with your father? Yes. Does she know where your mother is? No. What do you do next? I stay with her. I get to see my father. His body's there? Yes. Now move forward in time to the next significant event in this experience. Tell me what happens. My mom is at home, but she's not alive. What happened to her? She killed herself. How? Hanging. Who finds her? Me. I'm sorry. Are you there alone or with your aunt? She's at her home. But she lives very close. So you went home by yourself? Yes, I was getting some things. Oh, before you went back to her? Yes. What do you do when you find her? I fall to the ground. And you will once again, with your next breath, feel a deep, profound, flow of comfort all through your body. So tell me what you do next. I lay there for a really long time until my aunt comes to find me there. And then what happens? She takes me out of the room and closes the door. She has me get my things and she takes me with her. Is your mom's body still hanging? Yes. She calls the police when we arrive at her house. 
As you take your next breath, there will be gentle warmth and relaxation flowing through all your muscles, healing you, relaxing you, releasing you. On the count of three, you're going to move to the next significant event in that life. One, two, and three. Tell me what you're experiencing. Drinking alcohol. How old are you? Sixteen. Where are you? I'm sitting inside of a bar. Are you there alone? No. Who's with you? A man. What is your relationship to him? I like him. How old is he? It's not clear. Is he older or your age? Older. And how are you feeling as you're sitting in this bar? Really sad. What are you sad about? My family. Become aware of where you live now. With this man. How did you meet him? In passing. What did you like about him? He was funny and charming. What did you do during the day? Nothing. How come you left your family? You're still young. You could be living with your relatives. They didn't understand me. In what way? My hurt. Who were you staying with after the the death of your parents? My aunt. She lost her husband too. Did she not experience the same sadness as you? Yes. So in what way did they not understand you? I lost my whole family. How did it affect you? It consumed my thoughts. Were you in school? Yes. How did you do in school? I dropped out. When you were 10? 13. And what were you doing after that? Hiding at home so no one could find me and pretending to go to school. Did they try to help you in any way to deal with your sadness? No. Did they think that you were okay? Yes. So when did you find this man that you started living with? Fourteen. Did you go with him when you were fourteen? Yes. Was your family okay with that? I didn't tell them. I just left. So, as far as they were concerned, you ran away from home? Yes. And do you know how they reacted to it? They carried on. Did they look for you? No. Why do you think they did not look for you? I was causing trouble. Was it this man that introduced you to alcohol? Yes. So you've been with him for two years now? Yes. And do you plan to stay with him? Yes. What is your relationship like? He is the ruler of the relationship. And how do you feel about that? I don't like it. But you want to stay? Yes. I feel as though he saved my life. So as you look to the future, what do you plan to do? 
I want children, but I don't really see a clear future. Will you have to work to support yourself? No. The man supports me. Was there anything left from your parents financially for you? Yes, but I don't have access to it. Do you have to be a certain age to get it? Yes. And are you planning to claim it once you come of age? Yes. So once again, you will see yourself in the next significant moment in that life. And tell me what you're experiencing. I'm having a baby. Is it your first one? Yes. Who is the father? The man. A boy or a girl? Boy. How do you feel about this baby? Happy and sad. Why? Because I don't know if I can protect him. From what? Life. How's your relationship with the man? He treats me mean, but I love him. How old are you now? 21. Is he much older than you? Yes. Did you get married? Yes. Where do you live? In a home with him. Is it in the same city? No. You moved somewhere else? Yes. Where did you move to? North Carolina. Okay, why did you move there? For his work. What does he do? The first word was railroad that came to my mind. So on the count of three, you're going to move to the last day of that life. One, two, and three. And tell me what you're seeing. I'm in a bar. How old are you? Forty. Are you there by yourself or with someone? By myself. And what are you doing? Drinking. Do you drink by yourself often? Yes. And why are you there by yourself? I lost my husband recently. What happened? Heart attack. How old was he? Sixties. How many children do you have? Two. How are they doing? They don't speak to me. Why is that? They don't agree with my choices. What type of choices? Drinking. Is there anything else that you don't agree with? I'm not sure. Are they grown up now? Yes. So now move to the last thing that happens before the end of your life. Tell me what happens. In a car accident. You're driving after the bar? Yes. Do you feel drunk? Yes. Who causes the car accident? Me. What happens? I did it on purpose. What did you do? I ran into another car. What happens to you? I fly out of the car. What happens to the other driver or passengers in the other car? It was a parked car. So there was no one in it? No. 
And when you fly out, are you still in your body or do you die instantly? I die when I fall to the ground. So with your next breath, allow your spirit to float out of your body. And as you look back at the life that you just left behind, you will begin to get a greater understanding of the reasons for the choices you made, the learning that you embarked on. And tell me, first of all, what was the purpose for that particular life? To help with this one. Was it a preparation for this one? Yes. What is it that you needed to experience or learn in that life? To learn the dark side of grief. Why was that significant? How was that a preparation? I've dealt with a lot of grief in my current life and could have easily taken the same pathway. So that life experience was helping you make different choices this time? Yes. So to accumulate that experience, that was the purpose? Yes. As your soul continues to rise higher and higher, you begin to realize that this was a learning experience and you begin to shed the pain, the physical trauma, the emotional trauma. It's almost like a rocket that flies up into space and begins to shed parts of it so that it can fly higher and higher and become lighter and lighter. And so it no longer eats away at you, makes you feel heavy. You only take away with you the learning that was meant to help you deal with the current life. You can begin to feel those particles of grief, particles of pain, of trauma, of sadness, just float up into space, like the little bubbles in a fizzing drink, and dissipate, leaving your body as you take your next breath. You can leave them behind now, remembering that you are the soul that makes decisions. You chose a hard lesson, but you were very successful at experiencing it. You gained a dark experience, but you only needed it as a contrast to a different choice. And now you have it in your knowledge bank, and you can let go of any pain, trauma, sadness that was associated with it and bring it with you only as a contrast to the choices that you can now make. Choosing the path that will lead you to a lighter, more joyful future. How is it feeling now? I feel light. Wonderful. So I'd like you to allow those images now to fade away. 